So it's been 36 hours since we did the 25 mile ruck and I'm like 100% healed, which means my recovery system is like on absolute point right now. I'm gonna try to train legs later today, but the day we finished the ruck march, like Thursday, we had off of work. I literally was just bed rest the entire day. I didn't leave the bed, I couldn't even walk. And we had formation later in the afternoon. Everyone in the company was limping there. But it was just like feet and hot spots and then tight hamstrings and legs, but I am good to go after 36 hours. So last night I prepped apple pie baked oatmeal, which I will show you right now. So the baked apple pie oatmeal is just super easy to make. So I have this topped with some sugar-free maple syrup, two scoops of just chocolate whey protein powder and some water, and then an instant coffee for breakfast. Right now it's about 5.30 a.m. So you'll notice in like all my recipes, I use pretty much the same ingredients as a base. So in this is just one cup of old-fashioned oats, about 200 grams of diced apple, one egg, half a cup of almond milk, unsweetened, 34 grams of all-purpose baking flour, and then some stevia, about a teaspoon of allspice, teaspoon of ground cinnamon, teaspoon of vanilla, teaspoon of sea salt, some baking powder to help it rise, and that's it. So right now, the only thing that's keeping us from walking in the gym and setting up operations and setting the floor in and moving equipment is insurance. So right now, pre-workout, I'm stacking endo pump and flight, one scoop of each in about 12 ounces of water. So they won't let us physically walk into the doors of the gym, the location that we, we signed the lease, we paid our money for first month's rent and security deposit, but we need liability insurance. So I have a quote coming on Monday or Tuesday, and once that's set and we get our policy next week, we are able to move in and get everything started. What I'm gonna begin doing is starting to experiment with different exercises and rep set schemes to really help grow my weak body parts or weaknesses, and one of those being legs. I just want bigger legs. And for the longest time, I've kind of used the excuse of doing cardio and PT with the military, of not changing things up too often, or taking things to that next level, increasing intensity and aggressiveness with my legs specifically. But now as I make this transition out of the military and the army, and being a PL, my goals are a little different. I don't say that the military gets in the way of your training goals, but training, bodybuilding, powerlifting is not a priority to the Army. Uh, priority for them is cardio or passing your PT test, just completely two different goals. So what I did on this workout, which absolutely kicked my ass, um, is I increased volume dramatically. So I did 100 reps on leg curls, 100 reps on leg extensions, 100 reps on leg press, and then 100 reps on squats. I saved squats for the end and I was dying. I challenge you guys to try this workout. It's a smoker. Uh, the way I broke it up was seven sets of 15 reps each. So on leg press, uh, leg extensions, leg curls, I lowered the weight to make sure I could use a controlled uh, movement the entire way through. On squats, typically I'm working with like 315 upwards of 10 plus reps. I could only do 275 towards the end of this workout uh, for 15 reps, just because I was so smoked. That plus the 25 mile ruck just made it a lot harder. Um, but these are exercises and rep set schemes that I'm gonna start incorporating more often to get all that volume in. Um, and not just for legs, but other body parts as well. So just changing things up. And this is the one way I wanna just add more intensity volume and aggressiveness to my leg training sessions. Very quick post-workout meal. I have to meet Joel because we're heading into Seoul in like five minutes and it's like a 10 minute trip to get to where I'm meeting him. So this is one blueberry bagel with two tablespoons of peanut butter. And then this is like my go-to convenience. It's just two scoops of uh, chocolate protein powder and then one serving of PB2. So chocolate, peanut butter, like sludge. So Google Maps is really, really letting us down right now. We're trying to find the sushi place called California Sushi, but Google Maps is just screwing us. <laughs> so 
So we cannot find California sushi, so we're getting pizza. You wanna get pizza? So I've been craving pizza for like the last eight months. Like most of the pizza here in Korea isn't the same as like back in the States, but like you walk into this place, this is a New York style, it's called New York brick oven. I saw reviews on it, of it online and it smells like pizza back home. The appetizer is here, this is uh, calamari. If you don't know, it's just fried squid and it comes with some marinara sauce here, which looks really good. First pizza is here, this is the margarita. If Logan Delgado is watching, he knows that everywhere I go, whenever I try a new pizza place, I have to try their margarita pizza. And then our second pizza, this is the New Yorker, which is pretty much just like all the meats, vegetables. We will not leave one slice of pizza here before we leave. Hey, how you doing, sir? I will give that pizza place an eight out of 10. And it almost reminded me of like my favorite pizza place in Austin called Home Slice, which is on South Congress. And if you guys have never seen the video, it's probably like the most fun, entertaining and like enjoyable video to ever film was with Logan Delgado and we literally just rode bikes around Austin for an entire day and ate at like five different pizza places and drank beer. I filmed like a video a year ago, absolute blast. So driving through Gangnam, we came across Lamborghini dealers, Aston Martin, Maserati, Ducati, and now we are at a Ferrari dealership. We're gonna try and attempt to do a test drive. I doubt it's gonna happen. Either way, we're just gonna check them out. You ready? Hi, how are you doing? So as expected, the test drive is not gonna happen, but one day, one day I will have a car like this. Gang, Gangnam Station? Station? The main uh, train uh, train station? Young or English? Oh, this is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all New I know is English. Yeah? New Balance? New Balance shoe store? Shoe. <laughs> um, this, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I think we're thinking of two different places right now. <laughs> I think it's safe to say we're not gonna end up where we wanna end up. So I know in like a previous video I said Sangsu was a place I would live if I had to stay in Korea, but I take that back. It'd be Gangnam. For sure, absolutely Gangnam. Thank you. So we're currently in Coex Mall, which is in Gangnam. It's absolutely massive. This is a place where I had that pizza that lit on fire. I actually got lost in this place. Like I had to ask one of the like attendants, how to leave the Coex Mall because it's that big. So we got smoothies. I got a mango. Joel got a, did you get tropical mango? Passion fruit mango with uh, the little pearl gelatin balls in it. That probably was the best memory of all, all Korea. So when I lost my phone, like a few videos back, I left it in the cab and I had to ask this little five-year-old if he could speak on the phone to the Korean cab driver so I could somehow find my phone. This is probably like, we probably have two more times coming into Seoul while we're in Korea still. Because we leave in a few weeks. I can't say exactly when, but I will be home before, what's that holiday? Halloween, I will be home before Halloween. My legs are so incredibly sore already from today's leg workout. So I'm gonna to try to incorporate that session once a week and then the other leg session a week will be strength focused. But my legs are absolutely killing me right now. So right now it's about 8 p.m. I don't need any more carbs and I don't need any more fat in my diet today. Um, but I'm probably low on protein and I'm hungry. So I've been doing this lately. It's like my new chicken recipe. It's absolutely delicious. So what you do is you just take like, these are three chicken breasts here, slice them in half so it's thin. And then in the inside, you can't really see much, but there is ricotta cheese, there is spinach, and there's tomato. And then you just bake it at 350 for like 20 to 30 minutes. And I also put on some garlic salt on top. So all the macros on the screen this is my last meal of the night. So today's current macros, I really cannot tell you, nor do I really care. Usually I'm hovering around 250 protein, 400 carbs, 80 grams of fat. But when I first started tracking macros a few years ago, I had to be so exact 
on the dot of like 70 grams of fat, 350 grams of carbs, that it became really controlling and not fun anymore. So I've gotten to the point and adapted to where I can go without tracking macros and just stay in a ballpark and then kind of adjust over the course of the next couple of days or weeks, depending on where my weight's going, how my training's going. If I'm dieting or cutting, I'm more accurate and more exact. So like when I did my cut earlier this year for 11 weeks, I had no problem hitting my macros every single day with no cravings and I was able to lose 30 pounds in 11 weeks. It just, it wasn't difficult for me. But now I don't really see a need to be that accurate or exact every single day. So I just don't get caught up in it or worry about it too much. I want to hover around 215, 220, which is roughly where I'm at right now. And I'm just kind of in a lean balking phase. So tracking macros isn't, I don't want to say it's not a priority, but I'm not going to go crazy if I don't have my macros every day, if that makes sense to you guys. So that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will talk to you in the next one.